Hello everyone, Douglas Waltz, Old Man Comic Book Reviews. We've got a little tinier stack and a special thing at the end. Hold on to your hats, folks. Uh, here we are on issue five of the five-part miniseries, Moon Knight, City of the Dead. And because we have started the camera, here comes Manny. Uh, writer is David Pipose, penciler is Marcello Ferreira, Anchor is Jay Leistein. We left Mark to go face Osiris to uh, save a little boy's life. That's basically cut down to, and this is the last issue. So uh, we get a happy ending, sort of. Yeah, it's a happy ending. I mean, it doesn't die. Oh, spoiler, sorry. And uh, you get to see all of his incarnations of Moon Knight, which is fun. Um, they uh, also say this is the last days of the Moon Knight. They've been threatening to kill him for months. Next up is Sensational She-Hulk number two. Uh, Bruce Banner, well no, the Hulk shows up. Uh, he has long hair and he's, I don't read the Hulk so I have no idea what's going on. The lady who stole Jen's powers uh, is calling herself the Hulk. Our Hulk doesn't like that. Let the fights ensue as it were. Uh, there's a really cute backup story with Wyatt Wingfoot and Jennifer, which I thought was sweet. Um, he used diplomacy against Blastar from the Negative Zone, which Blastar is, uh, yeah, it's a great little short. It's a great little short. And uh, I don't want to know why they renumbered these, because it's the same writer, Rainbow Rowell is the writer, Andreas Genole, assuming I've said that right, my French is terrible, is the artist. It's not anything's changed except for the word sensational sensational so I don't get it Marvel want another number one all right the amazing spider-man spider-man with repo that's what he does he repos people and puts them in the in the limbo Zeb Wells is our writer Ed McGinnis is our penciler Mark Farmer Wade Van Graw Badger and Ed McGinnis are inkers I'm thinking somebody's having trouble keeping up. So the only person to blame in that particular thing would be Ed McInnes. So, but if he's penciling and everything, uh, rec wraps in it. That's all you need to know. It's a good setup for uh, gang war, which is coming up. They're already starting the simmering of the gang war stuff. I'm excited for that particular crossover. And uh, someone knocked Silverman's head off. So there you go. My new book that I am very fond of, Avengers Inc. Avengers Inc. or Avengers Incorporated, however you want to say it. Uh, I need uh, I need some credits here. Where is it? Why do I always put theirs in the front? Hold on, kids. Ah, here we are. All right, writer Al Ewing, penciler is Leonard Kirk, inkers are Leonard Kirk and Bellardino Bravo. Uh, who shows up? Valkyrie. A Valkyrie. Not our Valkyrie from like the Defenders. And asks Janet to come solve the uh, murder of Scourge, the Executioner. Trick thing here is, at the time he was mur murdered, he was in Valhalla. So, he's already dead. No, he's dead dead. Because, uh, well, I can't tell you the mystery because you have to solve the mystery yourself. But, uh, so it's just Vic Shade. Janet Van Dyne going to Valhalla to figure out why someone would kill the Executioner. The answer is interesting, and we get set up for next issue when somebody killed uh, one of the Death Throws. They're called the Death Throws because they all throw something. And someone has killed Oddball. <laughs> because, of course, they have. This is a great book. I'm having a, I'm having a great time. So... I hope they keep it around forever. It's not a limited series. It's supposed to be a continuing series, so that means they're probably canceled on me in like seven issues. All right. Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. Look at that cover. It'll be Superman, big Godzilla. We're on issue two. And I need to find... Hold on, folks. They print their guys in charge of the book in very tiny letters sometimes. At least they're tiny for... Old man me. Let's see. I still ain't found it. Is it at the end? Let's go to the end, shall we? Uh, yeah, here we go. 
I'll remember that for next time. Plus, I'm going to mispronounce all these people's names. Brian Bucoletto is the writer. Christian Duce is the artist. A uh, bunch of Godzilla fighting Superman. Also, if you remember from the second MonsterVerse, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, there was the other monsters. There's one that looked like a big bat, one that looked like a big spider with tentacle face, and there was the one that had the big tusks. Well, I think they uh, wanted to make sure people remembered them because they're all in this book with Godzilla. Um, I think they gave them some weird names, but whatever. Uh, interesting side note, the bat one is a Mayan legend called Kamazots, who I used in a supernatural fan fiction that I wrote. So, there you go. This is a lot of fun. All right. Who do we got? Last actual book is number four of Hades. Mr. Hey You, get off of my cloud. Elliot Kalan is our writer. Alessandro Rinalde is our artist. And they're still trying to get the Golden Fleece. They're guys are fighting dragons. Uh, Jason shows up and they're fighting him. Everybody wants it. Medusa wants it. Who apparently is related to Hades. Uh, this is... This should have been a Disney movie. I'm not really sure why they, they didn't make a Disney movie out of this. This is a... This is a good time. I really, really like that. So, see, not too many books, relatively painless. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what's in this envelope. See the envelope? See the back of the envelope? See the cool skull? That was stamped on there by hand because I saw the video. Many, many moons ago, not too many, uh, Bandcamp has a thing called Bandcamp Friday. Uh, every Bandcamp Friday, I go on there with 20 bucks, look for punk, pan, punk bands who want to sell me their stuff for a dollar. And I found this one with the greatest name ever, The Cult of Space Skull. And I said, this is really pretty good. Ah, I liked it a lot. Then they came to town here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. They came to a lovely place called The Runoff. Uh, look it up on Facebook. They do music there all the time. If you like music, you like live shows, it's their garage. They've converted it to a stage and stuff like that. It's awesome. So, uh, anyways, uh, Mike Hard's band Thrall was going to be there, and I'm like, well, Mike Hard's in Kalamazoo, you go see Mike Hard. This is how this works. So it is written, so shall it be done. And underneath, much to my surprise, was the Cult of Space Skull. And I'm like, well, oh, great, I get to see this band that I've only ever heard. And you know how it is when you hear a band, you're ready for that. I was not ready for the entertainment level that Cult of Space Skull was willing to bring when men in robes with skull masks and a woman, I think she's called the Red Queen, the cutest devil you have ever seen, wearing not much but a lot of body makeup. And then they proceeded to do things like, well, she, sacked, she cut her arm open and drank blood first, so she had goopy stage blood all over her face for the whole show. That was kind of cool. Uh, the two of the guys playing the guitars lost their robes all together and just rocking it out with short uh, underwear, not shorts, underwear. One of them had flamingo underwear. I did compliment his underwear. That's how that works. So um, I was awesome. And then she like cuts the one guy's guts out with a sword and pulls them out and swinging them around and choking the devil with them. But then, and I want you to remember we're in a garage. It's a two car garage. And she has this can, and I don't know what the can is, but this big. And um, she plugs it in. This is after the chainsaw attack. She plugs it in. And it's a, you know, the, the noodle men you see at the car dealerships? This was a full size with a skeleton on the side of it, noodle man, which she proceeded to pick up, put on her crotch, and assault all of us. Because we were in what's called close quarters in a garage watching this band. It, things went off the rails. It was the most fun ever. So then I started following them on Facebook, and I found out they do mini comics. And I was like, what? So uh, Michelle Thibodeau, if I said that wrong, Michelle, feel free to correct me, does the mini comics, and it's the Cult of Space Skull. And they're really nice. The artwork, this is a very tiny mini comic. This is, I think, the first one. The artwork is gorgeous. Um, there is a noodle man in it at the end, so I, I see the precedence going on there and a lot of things I saw from the band. It's funny, it's weird, um, it's great. And then, of course, 
because I gave them extra money. They sent me the comic, fucked up. Oh no, there goes our YouTube rating. And it's where um, these guys shit on the lawn, so they go to get him, and then they all get thrown to hell, and she's got to save him, and her magical barf talks to her in the toilet, and it makes more sense when you read it. So I'm waiting for the next issue, because I, I, I really need to see more of this. Um, one, I don't know that you would call it a criticism. Uh, I've made many comics for decades. Maybe a uh, something you ought to think about. Many comics are what we call precious real estate. Every single square inch. And they do a good job of using every single square inch. But I've got a blank page here. And I've got a blank page here. When you only get so many pages, you want to fill those up. Even if it's just cover of the thing, where to find them, information. This is a well done, gorgeous comic, as is this. To make it better, they did send me two stickers. We got the Space Skull sticker. And then we have the Cult of Space Skull sticker that looks like a little mini comic, but it's just a sticker. I have not decided where my stickers go. And that is what I received because I sent Cult of Space Skull $10. And I got to watch them hand stamp this little skull on there. Looks a little like a skull that Tom Sullivan always draws at Waste Cinema Wasteland. Oh no, wait, not, 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 not Tom Sullivan. Dirk Manning. It looks like a little Dirk Manning skull. That's what it looks like. Because he sometimes draws skulls on his autographs. So... This was awesome. I will treasure this forever. Thank you, Cult of Space Skull. If you're interested in this, go on Facebook and say, just look under The Cult of Space Skull. You will find them. Uh, they're mostly on the east side of the state. When they come over here, I'll see them. I don't know that I would go to the east side of the state because I'm just lazy. So, Or if I win the lottery, then I would go all the time. That's how it works. So here's our cool mini-comic. Here's our little stack of mini-comics. or no regular comics. Um... Warning, uh, November, December, which November's almost over, right? November, end of November and all of December and a little bit of January starts the Marvel crossover gang war. So we'll have more books because it'll be Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Luke Cage, Shang-Chi, uh, Spider-Woman. Plus there will be actual books called Gang War because that's how they do it. So something to keep an eye out for is Gang War. You'll see a lot of it here. Um, I'll note it. Note the Cult of Space Skull thing again. And they have, this is this is a handwritten envelope. This is gorgeous paint penmanship. I do say that they tried to turn, a, they had to turn a Z into an O because they made two Zs instead of, two, instead of a Z and two O's. I'm not making fun of your handwriting. I thought this was really good. It's very even, much better than mine. So as I always tell you, oh, I almost forgot. Sophie, Fiona. Super Mega Sleepover. You came over on Wednesday. Help make the pies. You help make the turkey stuff. You were here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Four days. Super Mega Sleepover. We did tons of stuff. Uh, we went out and did things. We uh, we just had a good time. We ate a lot of food. We, we're still eating it. Because we made a 25-pound turkey and a 25-pound ham. Anybody needs any ham, just comment below. No, I'm kidding. You can't have any of my ham. What do I think of so, and then finally, go read a comic book. I mean, no, no, wait, hold on. Um, so there's, like I said, you can read comic books in lots of places. I go to Fanfare Comics and Cars in Kalamazoo, Michigan. If you give them $5 a year, they'll give you 20% off of all new books. This is a great way to save a fortune, especially with the amount of comic books that we get. Because the comic books in the household are always sort of just kind of, well, you got to get this one. Oh, you need to get this one. Uh, my son Daniel is good at going here. We need to get this one once in a while. Uh, he strikes gold with something like Dead Lucky, which is a great book, and Dark Ride, which is a great book. These are just both awesome books. Some of the stuff, I, I don't like, I, I hate Fairyland. I don't hate it, uh, but it's not my thing. So, and then you can also go to the library. The library has tons of comic books. I have some that I just picked up. Um, you gotta give them back, but you still get to read them. You can go online and read comic books. It's just a great way to read comic books, and there's comic books about everything. Should we do our thing? I think we shall. Let's see. Oh, I think superheroes are going to win. Because I'm going to count the Justice League one. One not, one not hero comic. He's actually an anti-hero. He's a villain. He's a villain. And then the rest are, of course, all of these. You know, the best superhero in the planet. Godzilla. Saving the Earth. Right? Alright. So go read a comic book. I'll see you next week.
Have a great day. I hope your Thanksgiving was awesome. Goodbye.